So we have seen how water turns to water vapor that is by evaporation. But there is one more process, it is also a major process which turns the water to water vapor that is transpiration. Transpiration, what is this transpiration? So this process is achieved by plants and trees. Plants and trees, they convert the water to water vapor. They convert the water to water vapor. Why do they do this? How do they do this? Plants, they are fixed to the soil. The soil, it contains the water. The water is absorbed by the roots. The water is taken by the roots to the stem and it is supplied to the leaves and other parts. The leaves when they are exposed to the sunlight, the leaves of a plant they consist of tiny holes called as stomata through which the plant releases water vapor. The plant it leaves the water out in the form of water vapor, it loses the water. The sunlight makes the water to lose, make the plant to lose water. The sunlight makes the plant to lose water in the form of water vapor. And this process is called as transpiration that is observed in the plants and trees. So the water that is there in the ground, the water is turned to water vapor and released into the atmosphere by the trees and plants. That is the reason we need forest for rains because the forests they convert the water into water vapor. They play a major role in converting the water into water vapor by the transpiration. They also play a major role in keeping the water in the soil also that is a different thing we will discuss at a, some other point. But now here in this particular case the plants and trees they are making the water to water vapor by a process called as transpiration. Even animals like us, we are also making the water to water vapor. We are also contributing for the water cycle. But our part is less. You see that just you keep your hand and just say, just you breathe out. The air that you exhale is humid. That means the air that you breathe out has got water vapor. You are drinking water. That water comes in the form of water vapor while you breathe out. So the air you exhale, it contains water vapor. That means you are also making water to water vapor. This is called perspiration. From your body, the water comes in the form of sweat. It gets mixed up with the environment. So we are also making the water to water vapor, but it is uh, the contribution is very less. But you see that there in case of plants. The plants, they convert a large amount of water into water vapor by the process transpiration. So we have seen how the water is turned to water vapor. Let us see the second half of the cycle. Second half of the story, how the water vapor is again turned to water. Let us see. So the air is carrying the water in the form of water vapor. So the air with water vapor, it is going up, traveling up. Okay. So it is raising. As it is raising, it gets cooled. So the cool air, it reaches certain heights. When the cool air, when the air is cooled at certain heights, when the air is cooled, the water droplets or the water vapor present in the air, it get condensed to tiny droplets of water. So the air is moving to certain heights. When, they are, when the air is moving to certain heights, it is cooled. Right. So cooling of air makes the water to condense. How to believe this? We can believe this by looking at an experiment. You might be seeing that, have you ever seen that if you just take out a soft drink bottle, a cool drink bottle out of the refrigerator. So you have taken the bottle out and you kept it there. You have taken a chilled drink bottle from the refrigerator, kept it outside for some time. After some time, you will find that so many water drops are collected over here. Earlier, when you have taken it out, there was no water. Just you wiped it with a clean cloth and kept it there. But later, you find so much water is 
surrounding the bottle, water droplets. From where these water droplets have come, the air that is touching the bottle has got water vapor. That water vapor got condensed on the cool surface of the body. So when the air touches the cool surfaces, the water vapor in the air get condensed. In the same way, the air which is carrying the water vapor, when it reaches certain height, cooler places, at the cooler regions, the water vapor condenses to form tiny droplets of water. But as they are very tiny, they are not heavy, they cannot fall down. So they get stuck over there. They get collected, 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 till they become heavy. So after a certain point, all these droplets are collected to form bigger droplets of water. So when they have tiny droplets of water, you call it as clouds. So these tiny droplets of water, they form the cloud. But once they aggregate, in the sense, once they join with so many such tiny dots to become heavier and heavier and heavier bigger dots, these dots becomes the heavier. So they are heavy. They cannot stay at that height. So due to the gravity of the head, because of their heaviness, they fall down in the form of rain. So rain is nothing but water drops from where they are coming. They are coming from that height at where the clouds are formed. How were the clouds formed? The clouds were formed because of the condensation. What is the process? Condensation. So here we studied that evaporation is the process in which water turned to water vapor. Condensation is the process in which water vapor turned to water. Reverse. So condensation is the reverse to evaporation. So because of condensation, the heavier drops of water is collected and it fall down as rainfall. The place of evaporation and place of condensation are different. That is the reason why we are getting the rains here. But the water is not evaporated. The water is evaporated. See, so see this is the Indian subcontinent. Just I am drawing the coastal area. Here is the sea. Here the water is evaporated and the clouds are formed. So these clouds are coming to this place and they are raining. That means here the water is taken from here and it is brought down and put here. So this is the way how the water is transferred from seas and oceans to the land. That is because of the rainfall. So for a proper rainfall, who is contributing? Forest. Trees are contributing a lot for the proper rainfall. If you like this video, Please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.